so then, um, then re instead of asking whether or not it's material or non-material or what have you, it seems like then one of the only directions to go is through statistical evidence. And from uh, several of the people I've, I've heard from, um, including yourself and Sheldrake and um, Campbell and a few others, it seems that the ESP telepathy sci community gets way more data than is ever required for science, and yet still encounters probably the most resistance. That's right. In, in my book, I say that after 40 years of research, the reality of ESP is so strong, it would be statistically unreasonable to deny it. That's what we mean by proof. Mm -hmm. when I say a physicist has proved psychic abilities. Mm -hmm. For example, the NIH a decade ago was carrying out ev experiments to determine if aspirin prevents heart attacks. Mm -hmm. And they had a control group and a treated group, of course. Mm -hmm. And the treated group had many fewer heart attacks than the control group, so they felt that it would be unethical to hold out aspirin on the control group because mm -hmm. they were having heart attacks. So they ended mm -hmm. the experiment, and they published a paper saying, indeed, aspirin prevents heart attacks. The statistical evidence for psychic abilities is 10 times stronger than the NIH evidence that aspirin prevents heart attacks. Wow. Our effect size is 10, more than 10 times greater than theirs was. And they considered it so strong, they had to abort the experiment because <laughs> people were dying. Good God. So wow. we don't need more statistical evidence for the accur accuracy of psychic abilities. We worked for 20 years for the CIA, mm. finding airplanes, locating hostages, mm. uh, forecasting atomic bomb tests, describing mm. weapons factories in Russia, mm. uh, looking at the hostages in Iran, so we had operational tasks to do, and our work was so useful and so accurate that the CIA supported us for 20 years without interruption. Wow. You know, so that, that's paranormal in itself. If anybody <laughs> has, for anybody who's tried to get money from the government, you know that having 23 years of follow-on funding is extraordinary, un unprecedented. And we well, started then, SRI spending one to two million dollars a year for 23 years doing operational things for the CIA and for Army intelligence. So then what do you have to say to critics? Like for example, there's a popular video of Michael Shermer online doing um, a remote viewing experiment that looks, um, well, less than informed, uh, but there seems to be this whole I mean, I, I kind of like what Sheldrake has been calling it now. He's been calling it a pseudo-skepticism, which has taken hold of the scientific community when they get in the face of this. I mean, for example, um, Sheldrake was going to give some evidence to Dawkins uh, while he was being inter interviewed on telepathy research between human beings and telephones and human beings and animals. And it's an essay called uh, Richard Dawkins Comes to Call, and it ends with... Dawkins being disinterested in even looking at the evidence. So it seems that there's a really serious dogmatism despite the fact that, you know, you gentlemen have decades and decades and millions and millions of dollars and thousands of papers, uh, you know, declassified documents out there that really prove this thing without a shadow of a doubt. Well, it just may be that Dawkins is the last to find out. I mean, Dawkins <laughs> is a hardcore professional materialist Mm. and he's trying to save us from the ravages of organized religion, and I think he's on the right track for that. Uh, Michael Shermer mm. went to a religious college and studied uh, religion as an undergraduate major discipline, so he graduated as a, with a degree in fundamentalist religion. Hmm. So on the one hand, it's the atheist who doesn't like us because he's materialist. He's a materialist, mm -hmm. and the fundamentalist doesn't like us 
because what we're doing is ordinary physics and it's not divine. So we're caught between the fundamentalists, fundamental religious people and the fundamental materialist people. Wow. And I think that these people were... That we had trouble in the CIA mm-hmm. where we were producing, in one case, almost photographic accuracy of a Soviet weapons factory and a, and a sphere and a crane and the CIA analyst in the photo lab was a fundamentalist and he said this must be from the devil we shouldn't be dealing with this because wow. it's either from the devil or it's from Jesus and these guys are not Christians <laughs> <laughs> so we, we had a we had to go back to the CA headquarters and have a discussion about what our religious beliefs were. <laughs> oh my God! Wow, that really happened. Yes. Good God. Now they they continue to support us, and they just took that guy off the project because he was saying that we, one of our one of the examples of the the crane that I've published mm. elsewhere mm-hmm. was almost a picture-perfect description of a crane in Soviet Siberia. Mm. And this analyst said that doesn't at all resemble the real crane, whereas it's almost a photographic copy of it, psychically mm. generated by the police, psychic policeman Pat Price. Mm. And he said it, it couldn't be psychically devi- de- derived because these guys... Uh, are getting their data from the wrong wrong source. Hmm. Now the per, the the direction <clears throat> the direction I'm interested in going is yeah. not to amass more proof of psychic ability, but hmm. the important thing that we've now found that people like uh, Robert John at Princeton hmm. and I and Dean Radin all agree to is that psychic abilities as it's manifest in our work, is that uh, ESP is non-local. It's independent mm-hmm. of space and time. Mm. Uh, we don't know necessarily how it all works, but we know that the accuracy and reliability is independent of time and independent of space, and we're absolutely confident of that. Mm. As when, when we were able to forecast the silver market nine weeks in a row, make $120,000 from on nine weeks of forecasting without error uh, indicates that the future can be known. And what we believe is it is known. So, so from a physicist's you... point of view, uh, mm-hmm. I, I'm a fairly unreconstructed uh, positivist mm-hmm. so that I believe that things have causes. I believe mm-hmm. that events that occur have causes except maybe for things like radioactive decay, which operate in another realm. But if I have a dream, then I think that that dream has some uh, prior cause. And generally, that precognitive dream will be caused by what I see on my computer screen or hear on the radio the next day. Is two days ago, that I, I frequently have memorable dreams, and over the course of years, I've learned to separate the precognitive dreams from the anxiety dreams or wish fulfillment dreams, or dreams from the previous day's residue. The precognitive dreams have an unusual clarity, and they're not made up of my uh, ordinary repertoire. So I had a dream of being in an automobile where this big car was rolling down a hill out of control, and I wished it had a button on the dashboard to stop the car, and in my dream I reached over and pulled the gear shift lever and shifted from neutral into a gear, and the car stopped and I didn't die. That was a dream, and I told my wife about that because the car... I recognize as belonging to her son, and I thought there might be some danger there. So mm-hmm. that was the dream. Next thing I did is get a cup of coffee. Next thing I did is turn on my little desk radio, and 
and National Public Radio was describing a big wreck that just took place in uh, Lake Arrowhead, California, where a bus full of skiers was out of control, going down the mountain, the brakes failed, and it crashed into a pickup truck, killing a lot of people. Oh, my God. <clears throat> so my assessment would be that my dream, my waking dream at 6 o'clock, was caused by my hearing about the event on the radio two hours later. Fascinating. And indeed, so, most people's first experience of anything psychic is a precognitive dream. You know, I had one of those right before I met what turned out to be one of my best friends. I had a dream about them and then met them about 18 hours later for the first time. Oh, isn't that nice? So you're star-crossed. Yeah. <laughs> it seems like it. <laughs> so the, the, the aspect of psychic ability that fascinates me reason mm-hmm. I think that it's important and the direction that many people are going is to try and understand the causal link. If things have causes, then the radio program causing my dream is retrocausal. That mm-hmm. something at 8 o'clock causes an event two hours prior. And we've now had two formal conferences supported by the American Institute of Physics on retrocausality. I mean, retrocausality mm-hmm. and non-locality are big topics in modern physics. Is, the is idea that, that something yeah. in the future, usually in the near future, mm-hmm. uh, but something in the future can affect an event that takes place at an earlier time. Although the future can affect the past, it cannot change the past. 